Hello and welcome. This is Angie with thecountrysheetcottage.net. So we're back today with Cricut Basics. So today's Cricut Basics series is all about iron-on or heat transfer vinyl and we're going to go over the basics of how to use it. So you might have heard me just use two terms, iron-on and heat transfer vinyl. They're both used interchangeably and it is both refers to the exact same thing. So iron-on or heat transfer vinyl is actually a heat activated adhesive vinyl that you can put on fabrics, actually on wood, cork, different types of surfaces as well. So it comes in rolls usually or sheets depending on how you purchase it and it comes in like regular colors, glitters, metallics, patterns, all kinds of different ways that you can buy the product. And you can buy it all kinds of different places. So this version is the Cricut version but there's also other versions on the market. Cricut refers to this as iron-on, so if you're looking for it on their website, you'll look for iron-on. Some other websites references it, reference it as heat transfer vinyl, which references the fact that you need heat to transfer this vinyl to a surface. So that's all that means. So let's get into the basics of heat transfer vinyl. We've talked about that you can reference it by two different names. Now let's talk about the product itself. So when you remove it from the paper, you'll have a sheet of some size, 12 by 12 or 12 by 24, or you could have a long roll, it's just depending on how you purchase it. And it may actually be the same color on both sides, or this one is two different color on both sides. But one side will be shiny. That shiny side is actually the transfer paper. So it's actually a clear transfer sheet where the, the heat transfer vinyl is adhered to it. Now, heat transfer vinyl is not sticky. So it will not be sticky. The adhesive itself is heat activated. So once you activate it with heat, that's when it'll stick to your surface. So first let's look at how to cut heat transfer vinyl and then we'll actually put it to use and make a project. So this is a piece of heat transfer vinyl and you can see that this piece is actually, the good side is this side which is shiny and then the back is actually matte. Some are the same color on both sides, but always look for the shiny side because that's the good side or the side that has the transfer sheet on it. And you just want to place it good side down onto your mat. Now I like to use a blue mat for my heat transfer vinyl or iron-on on my Cricut machine. And then I just lay that across the mat. Just be sure to get it fairly straight. And then we can head to our Cricut machine and cut our design. The first thing you'll want to do is get your design just how you want it in Cricut Design Space. And then if you have trouble when you click make it with the design moving around, that's because you're not attaching them together. So I'm going to pick everything here and I'm going to attach it together. And that ensures when I click make it that everything will be in the same place as I have it designed. Now, when you're working with iron-on or heat transfer vinyl, the first thing you're going to want to do after you click make it is mirror your mat. Because we put the material face down on the mat, mirror, mirroring is required. And then we'll click continue. And then we'll need to set our material. So right now I'm using an Explore Air 2 and the dial is set to iron-on which is fine for most heat transfer vinyl materials. But if you want to pick other ones when you're using an Explore Air 2, be sure to turn your dial to custom. When you turn your dial to custom, all of the materials pop up. And you can actually browse materials and you can search for things like foil iron-on, for example, and pick it instead. So this screen will actually pop up for those of you that are using a maker, but for the, those of you that are using your Explore, you will need to turn your dial to custom in order to choose those custom materials. Now, iron-on does require the fine point blade, which comes with all Cricut machines, and now we can cut. Then you just put it in your Cricut machine, load your mat, and hit the button to begin. And now we're ready to weed this. 
So now that we've cut it on our Cricut machine, it's time to weed heat transfer vinyl. Yes, you will have to weed away the excess from your design, and let's look at how to do that. This is just a small selection of the actual Cricut tools that I have. So these hooks are what I like for weeding, but they also make tweezers that help to kind of grab up the heat transfer vinyl and weed it as well. So we're gonna weed the piece that we cut next. So one trick when working with your heat transfer vinyl or iron-on is to cut away the piece that was cut on the Cricut machine. So all of this is just excess and we can use it for another project. And now we have just the piece that we need to weed. And then a few weeding tips and tricks. So the first tip is to grab the very corner of your piece and use that to start peeling it back. So this helps you to grab that corner without needing fingernails or something like that to grab it. And then you can just pull away all the excess from around your design. So weeding is just the removal of everything you don't want, in this case on a shirt. So anything you don't want on your final design needs to be weeded away. So this will include things like the centers of letters or the centers of the turkey in this case, so the centers of any designs. So we're just gonna weed away all of this excess and then we'll be ready for the pressing portion. Now that you have your design weighted, it's time to press. So I'm gonna use the Cricut Easy Press as well as the Easy Press mat. So you can use an iron for this. You can use an Easy Press. You can use a traditional heat press. You don't have to have the Easy Press mat. You could use a folded up towel, something else that, uh, just a towel laying on a hard surface, anything like that. So the first thing I like to do with any iron on project is to heat up the material a little bit. This gets out any wrinkles and moisture that's in the material itself. Now, I have my Easy Press set for the type of iron-on that I'm using. So you'll want to look up on the manufacturer's website for the heat transfer vinyl that you're using and look up both the time and the temperature that you're supposed to press for. And this will also vary depending on the surface you're using. So look up the surface you're using as well as the type of iron-on on the manufacturer's website to get the time and temperature. And then you want to locate it on your shirt. So you just want to make sure it's fairly center. It's the appropriate length down from the top and that it's straight across. And then you can press. So we'll just press for the time and temperature indicated and the amount of pressure indicated on the manufacturer's website. So they'll also indicate how hard you are to press down and you need to take note of that as well. Depending on the type you're using, the manufacturer might also recommend pressing from the back for a few seconds. So we are going to do that as well. So after we're done pressing from the back, now it's time to peel this transfer sheet away. So we had a clear transfer sheet when we weeded our design. And now we need to peel that off of our shirt. So the manufacturer's instructions will indicate whether you're to peel warm or to let it cool before you peel. But I would recommend letting it cool for at least a few minutes before you peel it back, just in case this is really hot and it might burn you. So we've let it cool a few seconds. And now we can just start peeling that clear sheet back. And what you wanna do while you're peeling this back is make sure that all this is stuck down. If you see any that is not stuck, then just replace the carrier sheet and press again. And there you have it, a completed shirt made with iron-on or heat transfer vinyl. So now we've made a cute onesie with our heat transfer vinyl and you see how to use it on a variety of projects. Now, I mentioned some other surfaces, so I used it on fabric, but it definitely can be used on surfaces like wood and cork and things like that. And we've actually done some of those in the past. If you wanna look back on our YouTube channel or look back on the countrysheetcottage.net, we have some projects with that. If you can't find them, have a question about using it on an odd surface, 
ask in the comments section below and we'll be happy to help you or point you in the right direction. So if you love this video, if it helped you, please give us a thumbs up. If you love videos like this, you'll want to be sure to head over to our YouTube channel and subscribe because we love new subscribers and leave us a comment below. Tell us what you would like to see more about, about heat transfer vinyl, questions that you have that maybe we didn't answer in this video or future things that we might answer about your Cricut machine. So thank y'all so much for joining me today and I will be back next week with more fun Cricut crafts. Thanks y'all. Bye.